historic LB Brown House uh, is a very interesting project. The Perhaps the most important feature of it today is the man, Lawrence Bernard Brown. And viewers might be interested in knowing that we did not start out knowing that there was a person named Lawrence Bernard Brown. And we started out to save the old house because of his architecture, his design, and because of his age, well over 100 years old. It was during the course of the first couple of years working on the project that Mr. Brown's son came down from New York. And let us know that his father actually built the house. And so it was at that time we expanded our research to include uh, information about the builder Lawrence Bernard Brown. And so uh, we found out that he was a very significant person and that he was an early pioneer. He was a business person. He was very, very successful. And yet he was born in slavery. Elby Brown was born in 1856. Florida became a state in 1845. So he was born at about the time Florida developed as a state. Uh, he grew up during a period of reconstruction. He, you know, he had been a slave. He became freed in 1865. And upon gaining his freedom, Elby Brown never looked back. He started to achieve. He never went to school a day in his life, so he was not formally educated. And yet he learned how to read and write very, very well. So that enabled him to be very successful in business. He moved to Bartow perhaps in the late 1880s, and Bartow became an incorporated town in 1882. So again, just as his birth coincided pretty close to the Florida becoming a state, he moved to Bartow by the time Bartow became an incorporated city in Polk County. And he built this house in 1892. And those were the early years of Bartow's development, and the house is a very significant one. So Clearly, building this house would have added significantly to the development of Bartow, the early years. Uh, he built a lot of rental houses because there were workers here in the mine, workers working in the railroad, who would not have had places to live. They may have been living in tents, we're not, we're not certain, but they needed homes. So L.B. Brown started building houses. So he was one of those old pioneers who was, who was right at the cutting edge of the development of the state of Florida, Polk County, and Bartow. From time to time, he would do a rent to own. If he encountered a good renter who paid him well, uh, it was not beyond him to help the person become a homeowner by converting the rent into a mortgage. And he, his business is fed a lot of the other businesses downtown because he had to buy a lot of materials from the businesses and so forth. He was very, very active. He loaned money to people in need. I would, I, I would venture to say he probably was what you might call the go-to man in his community. You would go to him if you needed favor, if you needed to borrow money, if you needed advice. Because not only was he, was he a big man in terms of being an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur, but he was physically very big. L.B. Brown was about 6'3", a very muscular big man, and so people looked up to him. Although he was a big man, I understand from people who knew him, he was very soft-spoken, chose his words carefully, spoke deliberately. Other part of his legacy is that Brown left deep footprints. A lot of uh, accomplished individuals, a lot of pioneers, we hear stories about that amounts to anecdotes. Brown's story is not just an anecdote, it's well documented. Uh, we could go down to the county courthouse and find records of his business dealings, the houses that he owned. Uh, we could look at his ledger books. We could look at old newspaper articles all the way up to Jacksonville that wrote articles about L.B. Brown. And so it, it reminds me of Henry Wadsworth's uh, poem that said, Footprints on the Sands of Time. Brown left very, very deep footprints that helps us to 
bring the community together, to unite the community. People can come here and learn about Florida's history and not feel intimidated. And I think that's a real, real endearing legacy. These are some of L.B. Bryan's canceled checks. We probably have a couple of hundreds of these. These are just a, a sample of some of the canceled checks dating back to the early 1900s, 1905, 1903, and so forth. It, very, it was very unusual for the old pioneers to have money in the bank, and yet L.B. Brown did have money in the bank. In fact, he had money in two of Bartow's banks in the early 1900s. These documents were some of uh, L.B. Brown or the remnants of a few of his ledger books. Brown kept very detailed records of not only his business dealings, but as well as his social and church activities. This is very, very fragile. The, some of the entries date back to the 1890s, 1880s. Again, Brown left very, very deep footprints and his details, some of his business and other dealings. You could also see the beautiful handwriting that he had, uh, he had way back then. Well, we, uh, we do not normally handle these documents because they're so fragile. We have working documents. However, we do make them available to historians who might want to look through them. During his lifetime, L.B. Brown was involved in a number of different activities. Uh, one of which he was most proud of was that he was a Bible salesman. He was a very pious, a very devout Christian man. And he sold Bibles and he always mentioned that was his main vocation. However, he also dug wells. L.B. Brown repaired umbrellas. He silvered mirrors. Several items belonged to his parents. This, for example, is, was his mother, mother's hand mirror. Uh, now, although Mr. Brown silvered mirrors, he did not make this mirror. It happened to belong to his wife. It's silver and some gold trimmings involved. Also, Mr. Brown repaired umbrellas. He was big on umbrellas. This is the handle to one of his personal umbrellas. It's made out of gold and mother of pearl. We only have the handle. This, however, is a complete umbrella which Robert said belonged to his father. Viewers would be interested in knowing back then, umbrellas and parasols were big ticket items. They were not like these little $2 things you buy in the store today. They were very, very expensive, and every well-dressed man and well-dressed woman had a nice umbrella or walking stick. As we mentioned, the, our principal artifacts is the L.B. Brown house itself, but we do have a few other items. This, for example, is L.B. Brown's book of etiquettes, how to conduct yourself in different situations. It's entitled, The Golden Way to the Highest Attainment. And here, you can actually see his complete signature. It's written almost in calligraphy, L.B. Brown, and it's dated April 1890. Again, this is his book of etiquettes. Interestingly enough, uh, L.B. Brown and his wife had seven children. Those seven children produced one grandchild. That grandchild produced no children. And so when Mr. Brown's son died about three years ago, that was the end of the Brown family. Recognizing that he had no direct heirs to leave his items to, Robert Brown did give us several items belong to his parents. During the restoration process, we went through great length to ensure that we tried to save every piece of lumber that we possibly could save by patching it up and not replacing it.
home that Lawrence Bernard Brown built in 1892, not some replica that was built by a modern day contractor. Well, the, the very first room we use to bring the tourists to is the parlor. The parlor is perhaps uh, one of the smallest rooms in the house. It was designed for, it's a sitting room where Mrs. Brown perhaps and even Mr. Brown would have intimate discussions with their visitors. And then of course, uh, in that parlor, we have a cameo photo of Mr. and Mrs. Brown in their younger years. Also in that room, there are a couple of mirrors that are built into the wall. Those mirrors were silvered by Lawrence Bernard Brown. The other room, the larger room, is the sitting room where we have uh, a number of documents and we also have cutouts in the walls so the visitors can see what the interior walls look like. There's a beautiful fireplace in that room uh, and so forth. We, in the hallway, we have a photographs of all of the Brown family, all of L.B. Brown's children, and Mrs. Brown, Annabelle Brown. We also have a photograph of Mr. Brown's mother, Catherine Brown, who was a Native American. We do not have a picture of his father, Peter Brown. The kitchen is restored. We were blessed to have been given a wood-burning stove that's very, very similar to the wood-burning stove that the Brown family owned, according to the son Robert. The stove was donated to us by Mr. and Mrs. Dudley Putnam, the parents of our Agriculture Commissioner, Adam Putnam. And we we're blessed to have received a donation from a number of good citizens throughout the county. In the dining room, we have a, a replica. We restored the dining room furniture. It is an original, something we acquired from the antique store that's very similar to the dining room furniture that the Brown family owned. And then of course there's the bathroom, the restroom, that was built perhaps about 10 years or so after the Brown house was built in 1892. During that time in 1892, there, were no, there was no plumbing in Bartow, so the only uh, facility was, was the outhouse. As soon as plumbing became available, the Brown built the the rough room inside the house. Going upstairs, we have four bedrooms, the master bedroom and three smaller bedrooms. There are also mirrors that are built into the wall that Mr. Brown silver as well. There are certain items and furniture that did belong to the Brown family located upstairs. It would be very tempting to talk about how successful our organization has been in restoring the Brown House. And while it's tempting, it would be incorrect. The reason why this project is so successful is because of the partnerships that we developed, because of the assist, uh, uh, significant help that we received from the state of Florida, Polk County government, the city of Bartow, and Bartow Community Redevelopment Agency. This may be one of the best examples of public-private partnership that you find anywhere. In addition to those government agencies, we've had a number of private citizens, the late George Harris, who was very significant in helping us, to Mr. and Mrs. Dudley Putnam, who donated the wood-burning stove. Uh, Mr. Putnam just uh, donated some information about the history of the area. The furniture in the parlor was donated by La Francine Burton of Lakeland. Just, just a lot of people, I'm missing some names, but we, the point being is that we've had a lot of significant help. I want to point out also that one of the special features of the Brown House is the amount of originality that continues to exist. You can think about history. There was a sense of pride. And if you look very closely, a lot of things, even the side... Today, L.B. Brown's legacy continues in that we're able to use his examples, especially for young people. The students who come out here, we're able to point out all of the advantages that they have today and, and the opportunities they have to make it big, comparing that to L.B. Brown, who started out with nothing, no formal education, and yet he 
overcame. And of course he did so by not looking back. L.B. Brown came out of slavery and it's apparent he did not do a poor me. Why did he do it to me? I mean, he just looked forward and improved himself and made himself of value to the community. The washboard allows you to wash one piece at a time. This device, I don't know when it was invented, but it allows you to wash an entire load. It's called an automatic washer. Sort of like a plunger. You will wash the entire load at one time. Brownhouse has a lot of tentacles that reach far. No matter where I travel in the state of Florida and even some, some other places, folks recognize the historic L.B. Brownhouse because, quite frankly, many media, both print and broadcast, have covered the L.B. Brownhouse. We're very, very proud to note that the historic L.B. Brownhouse has an exhibit in the new Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture on the mall in Washington, D.C. We might note also that uh, through the good graces of Congressman Dennis Ross, we also have a photograph of Mr. Brown hanging in the Hall of Congress. And so little old Bartow and rural Polk County is getting a lot of notoriety as a result of the historic L.B. Brown House. We, uh, we have a uh, our annual festival, which is held every February, always the second weekend in February. This year it will be February 10th, 11th, and 12th. One of the staple features of that festival is our L.B. Brown Youth Leadership Award. On Friday morning, the public schools in Bartow, Fort Meade, and Mulberry are invited to nominate youth leaders to whom we present the L.B. Brown Youth Leadership Award. That award over the years has been very, very helpful to the young people who receive them because it becomes a part of their resume for college entrance and so forth. We give the award to those youngsters who have made significant achievements in their schools and are nominated by their principal. The story of L.B. Brown it can really help us to, in our discussions with our young people, the ones who may be struggling to find themselves, maybe in L.B. Brown's life they can find some inspiration to. Here's a man who started out with nothing, who never went to school, was not formally educated, born in slavery, yet he overcame all of those debilitating conditions and became very, very significant in his community. He became a successful businessman, a devout Christian, and really helped the community in many, many ways. And we encourage the schools and churches and others to look to L.B. Brown's life to, as examples for the young people today, to learning how to get along with each other. Among all the notes that L.B. Brown kept, all the records that he created, no place did he ever write down any racial problems. I would imagine he must have encountered some problems, but apparently they weren't significant enough for him to write them down. The lesson for us today is that we need to continue to move forward together. <laughs>